change your heart, change your life, change the planet. Hey everybody, it's Tim Van Orden, and today I want to talk about failure because it's one of my favorite topics. Because we fail a lot in life, and most people don't know how to do with it. Deal with it. Like that. That was a failure. But I'm going to leave it in there. I'm not going to edit that out. All right? This morning, I got a quote in my inbox. I've got a website that sends me an inspirational quote of the day. And today, it was by Julie Andrews, who was my dream woman when I was a little kid. I saw Mary Poppins, and from that point forward, I wanted a magical woman with an umbrella that could fly, that would give me spoonfuls of sugar to make the medicine go down, and and say things like this. Perseverance is failing 19 times and then succeeding on the 20th. It's going to take a whole lot of sugar to make that medicine go down. As much as I love Julie Andrews, I kind of prefer the way that Curly of the Three Stooges stated it. If at first you don't succeed, keep on sucking till you do succeed. And these are fun quotes. They inspire us. They tell us that grit is important and that most success in life is really a war of attrition. If you can be the last person standing because you haven't given up, chances are you'll succeed even if you don't have a hell of a lot of talent. It's just that most everybody else gave up. So just keep going. And although there is some value to that perspective, I think there's also a few problems with it that kind of bug me. So when I read this quote this morning, I'm like, eh, not so much. The first problem I have with this is that the successful attempt gets all the credit. It gets all the focus, and that's what gets celebrated. These 19 failed attempts, they're lumped together and dismissed. So we've got the successful attempt, which makes it onto the six o'clock news, and people write books about it. And then we've got the failed attempts, which are seen as simply obstacles along the way to success and had no part in bringing it about. In fact, they hindered rather than helped us achieve this success. And if you make this type of distinction between the successful attempt and the failed attempts, you really only have two reasons for succeeding. One is that your God-given talents were finally revealed. I knew all along that I was a successful person, but the circumstances weren't in alignment, the stars weren't in alignment. But now everything went perfectly and boom, people can see that I'm actually a really gifted person. And people like me, damn it, and I'm going to affirm that in the mirror every day. Or the other possibility, which is that you got lucky. If there's no relationship between effort and success, it was either your talent waiting to be revealed or it was luck. And if that is the case, there's nothing you can do to succeed. By creating this distinction, we actually set ourselves up for failure because we either have it or we don't. The trials, the learning, the growth, the processing had nothing at all to do with it. It was either my inner perfection or it was dumb luck. And nobody wants it to be dumb luck. We all want to believe that we had something to do with it. The failed attempts, they had nothing at all to do with me. But the successful one, dude, that was all me. Finally, All this other stuff got out of the way and I emerged. And the other problem that I have with this type of thinking is something that I call the present self bias. It's the guy right now that just finished the successful attempt that gets all the credit. All the Tims in the past that got me here, that built the foundation of skill that allowed me to take this step, they're not important. They're totally invalid. All the processing, all the preparation, all the planning, all the other people that helped, all the things that had to come together over time, eh, not important. It's me right here, right now with my perfection being revealed. Celebrate me. Celebrate this, Tim. Don't look at all those chumps that failed. I don't want to be remembered as a failure. I want you to remember this present Tim right now, the guy on the podium. But of course, this is an illusion. All those Tims along the way incrementally got me to the point where I could finally succeed. 
It's kind of like watching diving or figure skating in the Olympics. We've got this great technology now that can do freeze frames in the middle of the motion that the athlete is taking. So we can see the beginning of the toe off in the, the loop that the person is going to spin. And then we can see how their knee was rotating, where their arms were. And on screen, they'll have all these different captures of that athlete in motion. And of course, the final one where they land perfectly, well, that's the one that wants to be celebrated. But the screen is actually showing us all these different versions of that person all the way along. And each one of them is essential. If the person at the beginning, when they launched up into the air and did that toe off, if they weren't on point, then the person at the end that gets all the applause, well, they wouldn't be in that position. So we tend to focus on what I just did right now if it's a success and we forget about everything that went into it, all the Tims, all the circumstances, all the variables, and all the other people that helped out and how we learned and grew along the way. So I don't see these failed attempts as failures at all. I see them as essential steps toward the successful attempt. And therefore, each one of these steps is part of that success. They all share in the success, not just the final attempt where you got it right. You only got it right because of the foundation that you built, because of the learning, because of the trial, because of the error. They're not failed attempts. They're called incremental growth. You have to practice. You have to practice. You have to practice. And in doing so, you're going to experiment. You're going to push the limits. You're going to go right to the edge of the envelope of what is possible for you. And when you do so, most often, you're not going to get the desired result. And that gives you information. In formation, it helps to form you or inform you so that in the next attempt, you now have a greater knowledge, you now have greater experience, you now have greater neural networking related to the parts of the body and brain that need to coordinate to pull this action off. There's so many things that took place along the way in order to get you to that final podium cheer where you've got the medal or you're being awarded or you win the million dollars, whatever it is. All of them are essential. None of them are failures. They're only failures if you quit and walk away. In my own life, when I move towards a goal, I no longer have this distinction between failure and success. Instead, I have a cycle that I keep going through where I plan, I commit, I attempt, I observe, I incorporate, I learn, I grow, I repeat. And I keep going through this cycle it all begins with that planning step. What is it that I'm trying to do and how am I going to go about doing it? And then you have to commit. You've got to carve out a block of time where you say, I'm going to be executing the steps towards this goal at this particular time. I'm going to get whatever outfit on it I need to do so, get whatever tools I need, either buy them or set them up so I'm ready to go, create a space in my environment, whether it's a desk or it's a gym space. But you need to actually commit and get yourself ready and then you attempt. You sit down, you put paper to pencil, you put foot to trail, you put hands to weight bar. And then the next step, which is to observe, I think is the most important step of all. What just happened? Most people skip this step. They don't want to know. They don't want to investigate. They just want to try it, try it, try it. And they hope that in one of these attempts, it's going to work. But if they're not observing, they're not learning. And the possibility of growth is significantly reduced. This is what Anders Ericsson calls deliberate practice. And if you haven't checked out his books, I highly recommend the book, Peak. Deliberate practice is where you make an effort and then you look at what happens. You say, okay, I wanted to do this, but my body went in a different position or I tried to exert this amount of effort and I didn't have the juice for it. Or I tried to write this particular thing and something went wrong. Or I was trying to play the instrument a certain way and it didn't quite hit the note that I wanted. Okay, let's observe. Let's take a look. What part of this didn't work? And by investigating that, you can learn something. Take some notes. Stop and try it again. Okay, where did you get caught the next time? By observing and by taking notes, you can start to get a greater idea of what's actually going on here. And then you incorporate. 
You take that information and you bring it back into your next attempt. And this is the learning phase. And if it works in the next attempt, there's going to be a little bit of growth. And then you got to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. And it's not about failing along the way to success. It's about being present and observing what's going on, getting a greater understanding of what is truly required to get to the next level. And not just hoping that some perfect innate talent is going to be revealed or waiting on luck. If I do this enough, one day I'm going to get lucky. If I keep buying lottery tickets, one day I'll get lucky. Maybe some people do, but it's not very many people that get lucky. It's tiny, tiny, tiny minority. In fact, it looks like my fingers are touching, but they're really not. That's how small it is. It's invisible. So as you move towards your goals, I urge you not to see this difference between success and failure. Instead, I want you to look at the process and I want you to look at what's showing up. Get present, get grounded, be honest with yourself about what's happening and observe where you need to make some changes and then make them, incorporate them. It's okay not to be perfect. It's okay not to do it the first time. It's okay not to do it the 19th time as long as you're paying attention and incrementally growing along the way. You'll get somewhere. You will improve. Guaranteed. All right? I love you guys. See ya. I don't have to grit my teeth to do it. I don't have to fight through anything. I can get out and gently get myself in gear by breaking things down into their component steps and then really gently just observing them, exploring them. Thank mm-hmm. you.